Senator from Kansas. I ask, is there a quorum call? Yes. If so, then I ask that it be vitiated by unanimous consent. Without objection. Mr. President, thank you. On Sunday, Border Patrol, our Border Patrol, reported more than 7,500 migrant illegally crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. 7,500 migrants crossed the border on Sunday. Then on Monday, there were more than 8,000 arrests along the southern border as a new surge of migrants tried crossing on that day. These numbers still haven't provoked any significant, meaningful response from the Biden administration, and they are just shy, even though they're just shy of that single-day record for the year that was recorded in May after the end of Title 42. Every day I think that there's going to be a response, a reply, significant effort isn't necessarily a partisan issue. Democratic Mayor Eric Adams stated last week that New York City is being destroyed and it will cost $12 billion after an influx of 110,000 migrants from the southern border after those migrants have landed in the city. And while 110,000 migrants clearly is a massive number for any city to absorb, it's only a tiny fraction a very tiny fraction of the 2.76, 2.76 million migrants who crossed the border in FY 2022. The unending catastrophic situation on the border has continued for so long that it seems like the Biden administration has grown numb to what in any circumstance would be considered a crisis. A crisis for the people who are crossing, a crisis for people in the United States, a crisis for people in New York City, Gone are the days when the migrants showing up at our borders were from our neighboring countries to the south, our neighboring country to the south. Now migrants are flooding in on trains from El Salvador, Haiti, Ecuador, Nicaragua, and most significant to me, China. We have a gaping hole in our national security that stretches from California to Texas, and I assume our other borders as well. And our adversaries are already using that circumstance to their advantage. I visited the border in a bipartisan group of senators earlier this year and witnessed Chinese nationals being apprehended, apprehended by our border agents. This week, it was reported that approximately 18,000 Chinese nationals have been encountered at the southern border. This is compared to 2,000 in 2022 and only 450, still a big number, in 2021. Also reported that some of the individuals, these individuals potentially had tiny ties to the Chinese Communist Party, and not one of them was detained for any length of time. This failure to respond to the arrival of the Chinese, it, it, was, it succeeded. The FBI report that I read with great concern about migrants with ties to ISIS that had been promor permitted to enter the country. Customs and Border Patrol, which is overworked and understaffed, released an individual on the terrorist watch list into the country. The American people deserve answers from the Secretary, Secretary Mayorkas, and from the Biden administration. I've been on this floor previously, numerous times, like many of my colleagues, to make the case that the crisis at the southern border is causing an influx of illegal, deadly drugs like fentanyl from China, entering the United States and, and leading to the overdose deaths of thousands of Americans. I made the case that this is a humanitarian crisis as mothers and children attempt to make the long, dangerous trek across Mexico along the way they faced hunger, heat waves, human trafficking, and drug cartels. The caravans with thousands of migrants continue to march on, the, on our southern border. Border agents have been pulled away to deal with the record number of migrants and are left without the manpower to try to stop drugs and human trafficking, spies, and potential terrorists. For a long time, we've worried about just people coming across our border, violating our sovereignty, taking our jobs. But it is even more significant, more critical that we respond now as our law enforcement, drug cartels, human trafficking, and now our national security harmed, harmed significantly by those who enter our country illegally to do us harm. 
President Biden must act to ensure a stricter enforcement of our immigration laws, reinstate the construction of a wall or fencing in areas that are largely unprotected, and the administration must send a message loud and clear that our border is closed to unlawful entrance. Way past time, way past time we finish the wall and give our law enforcement agents the tools they need to better protect our border. Instead, this administration is sitting on resources and paying storage fees for the unused border wall panels. The addition to the President's lack of action is, is just an amazing circumstance we find ourselves in. Our national security is at stake, and we fail to respond. I would say that we can do more than one thing at one time. I also believe that the Senate should act to deliver lasting solutions to keep our border secure, keep our community safe, and ensure humane treatment of migrants. We could start with taking a vote on the Secure Border Act. Securing our southern border shouldn't be, and I hope isn't, a Republican or Democratic issue. It's not a Texas or New Mexico or Arizona issue. It's a national security issue. In speaking of national security, I'd be remiss if I didn't raise the importance of passing a supplemental appropriation that includes not only support for our efforts to contain the influx of people on our southern border, on our borders generally, but also should contain money to support the efforts by the Ukrainian people to have a free country. While Ukrainian forces have not made a decisive breakthrough in their counteroffensive, they are making incremental progress that deserves our ongoing support. The commitments made by our European allies now surpass America's, and the assistance from the United States has sent to Ukraine has been accounted for by multiple inspector generals. A failure on our part to remain committed would shake the confidence in the United States in allied capitals around the globe. This, in turn, could lead to more aggression by more adversaries. Now is not the time to give up on Ukraine. Vladimir Putin is counting on us doing so. His only way to win, his only way to win is to hang in long enough until the West, until the United States and our allies grow tired or otherwise become distracted. America's resolve against Russia's aggression should be unwavering. The world is watching and judging American de dependability. If we are found unreliable, the world will become an even more dangerous place. If we fail, the world becomes a more dangerous place. This is certainly about Ukraine, but it's about the security and safety of the people of the United States. Looking the other way is not an option. What is happening at our southern border, and in fact what is happening well beyond our borders in Europe, needs both need a serious response. The security of our country, the security of American citizens, the security of Kansans depend upon it. Mr. President, I yield the floor and notice the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call a roll. Ms. Baldwin.